So my name is Jamie Norris. I'm a community councillor here in Ulahaktuk. Um, I came north in 2007. I've worked in pretty much all the communities uh, in the Beaufort Delta region of the Northwest Territories. I've been here in Ulahaktuk uh, for about the last eight years. I talk with so many people who um, tell me a story of how uh, they started, and again, mostly alcohol and weed, right? So they, they, they were struggling with something in their life. They started either drinking more alcohol or smoking more marijuana. And how, for a little while, they will talk about how it felt it helped them. And, uh, and also, and often, and this is a word I've, I've heard used with, with so, in so many conversations I've had, the idea of it, it numbs, it numbs the pain, it sort of makes the pain go away. So of course, what happens is the pain comes back when the person sobers up or, you know, comes down or whatever. The conversations that I often end up having around that are that actually whatever the issue is, whatever the struggle is, it's still there, you know, in our lives when we wake up and the hangover goes or we come down from the high or whatever, like the, the issue is still there. So then, you know, it becomes a struggle of do I just jump back in for more and that can lead to that whole cycle of addiction or do I go, di go a different way? How we can talk to, to, uh, to our friends, family about, you know, struggles they might be having I mean, the first thing is, you know, it's about listening. It's not about talking. You know, we, sometimes we talk about this idea of formal and informal supports. So that's kind of counseling language, just for things like the informal supports, friends, family, elders, knowing, you know, being aware of who kind of the, the folks in the community are that are available to help, knowing the you know often in some communities there's a thing where you know you know that these houses are sober they're safe places to go so they can be identified i know in one community a few years ago they had a thing where um they would have a colored light bulb that would be in the, on you know at night you know so that that kids or whoever would know that's a safe place to go um the uh, in community it's you know the, the kind of the resources you know the safe places so just knowing, you know, I mean, all of the different communities inside a community. So there's, you know, like here in Ulahaktuk, you know, there's, there's the school, of course, there's the health center, but there are all sorts of little, you know, communities within that, family communities, you know, hunting communities, diff different sort of folks who sort of, well, just form and make up their own communities. In that moment when we're thinking like, what is the first step of, of, of someone getting help? Well, again, I think the first step is, first of all, we realize I need help. I acknowledge that to myself, so I reach out. And then I reach out either to community counselor or wellness worker. I reach out to a trusted family member or elder in the community. I might reach out to someone, to an old teacher. I might reach out to um, an elder that maybe I've never really spoken to, but I know, you know, holds a place of trust and respect. Basically, trust is a big word. I will reach out to whoever I trust. I might, you know, if it's certainly in some sort of emergency, I can reach out to the RCMP, I can reach out to the health center, I can reach out to, um, you know, here in the community, maybe um, the Hamlet office, whatever. I mean, those are the kind of resources that are there. So it's so important to talk. I mean, I, and I think talking is often the first step. And one of the other things I like to do is just to sort of ask folks, can ask us right now in that sense of, okay, just who in your life, it can be, it doesn't have to be like a counselor. I mean, it can be a family member, a friend, a teacher, a coach, a, you know, an, a, an uncle, an auntie, whoever. Um, who do you, who's one person you feel safe talking to? And just, I always like to sort of do that just so, you know, that can be identified and in the back of our minds. And then, you know, there's at least a place to go. And of course, if someone might say, well, there's nobody. Um, and then there are, you know, there are all the resources and stuff that, you know, we make available. But I think talking ultimately 
is kind of the start of everything.